welcome to AstroVenture, the DSLR Astrophotography Channel. Hey there, AstroVenturers, welcome back. If you're new to this astrophotography channel, my name is George and this is the astrophotography channel for DSLR and mirrorless camera bodies combined with the lenses we already own and a simple star tracker like the Sky Guider Pro or the Star Adventurer. Tonight, I was uh, heading out to uh, shoot, I believe it's uh, 2403, NGC 2403. It's a uh, galaxy that I haven't exactly found a name for. Unfortunately, my location I was going to uh, is overwhelmed with mosquitoes. And what I mean is if you've ever been to a swamp, you know what I'm talking about with overwhelm. So unfortunately, the cloud conditions are supposed to kind of fall apart. And with the overwhelming mosquitoes, I decided to head home. But while I was out there, I was planning on shooting a tutorial on doing star trails. Well, since I ended up home, I can still do that tutorial and we'll work with what we've got. Um, challenge that we've got ahead of us. First off, as the night goes on, there's supposed to be some high clouds coming in, so we'll have to deal with those. Second, my neighbor's house has a bathroom light that is like a floodlight, and if they turn that on, it is going to light up my backyard. But we're gonna hope, hope that uh, they're in bed and that they stay there and that they don't turn that light on. So we shall see. Anyway, let's get started here. So, <clears throat> in doing a star trail shot. Uh, first off, you got to locate the uh, North Star. That's easy enough to do. Then what you're going to do is figure out your composition. Do you want the North Star centered in your image? Do you want it off to the side? And what's going to play into that is what is going to be your foreground in the image? Because you could certainly point it at the North Star and just start taking images. But, uh, you know, what really makes the image work is what do you have in your foreground. Now, since I ended up in my backyard, uh, what I've decided to do is there's no way to kind of hide the ugliness of shooting from the backyard. You've got the back patio cover over, you've got some power lines over, and I was thinking, okay, well, what could I do to put into my foreground to make this work? And so I decided to use my rather large Predator here. And so this Predator will provide a silhouette backdrop to shooting at the uh, the North Star there to do the star trail. So I decided what my foreground will be. It'll work within this setting of a backyard. Now back here at the camera, on this one I'm shooting with my 24 to 70 um, Tamron lens. And I have this, uh, well, we'll go over the settings in a moment. Uh, this is going to be shooting at 24 millimeters wide. Now, um, generally the wider the better because you're gonna pick up more stars, but you know, you decide what the composition is going to be for you. Uh, with this, uh, the lens opens up to a 2.8. However, you know, I'm going for that long exposure and I am working within uh, the suburbs here. And so I'm needing to get those long stretches of exposures, but I've got to cut down all the flooding light of being in the suburbs. So let's go over our setup here. So the lens, as I said, Tamron 24 to 70, and this lens will open up to a 2.8. However, I'm looking to shoot for a minute and a half and to cut down on the light coming in, I have my aperture set at an F8. That will one, help to get this predator that's very close, a little more in sharp, uh, a little sharper in focus. Uh, fact is it's a little bit too close to entirely get focus, but it can get better. And I am set to focus on the North Star in the distance. So that'll work there. Over here on the camera, the camera that I'm using tonight is a Nikon D750. Uh, this is a full frame and I have the ISO set to uh, 100 for an ISO. And then as I said, I'm shooting for a minute and a half to get those trails with the stars. So in combination, 24 to 70, 24 millimeters, F8 for the aperture, ISO 100, and then exposure time, a minute and a half. And uh, together, that should work out really well. I've got a nice blend of not too much glow, but I can pick up the stars, and I have my foreground that kind of fits within 
uh, what the lens is picking up here in my backyard. And then I've got my intervalometer running, so that will just run. And my intention is, is hopefully to get about two hours of imaging, but we're gonna work off of uh, the clouds coming in and uh, whether or not my uh, neighbor's bathroom light comes on and floods this backyard. So let's get this started. Uh, it's now 12.10 in the morning. We started imaging at 10.45 and uh, clearly if we were actually looking to do a star trails image for the night we would be running much longer but this is just a tutorial on how to do it. So at this point here I don't have to shoot any darks. I don't need flats, flat darks or biases. We're solely going to use the lights, the actual images and I will rejoin you next at the computer and we will go ahead and get into Photoshop and we'll start stacking this. Now I know there are other programs out there that will do the stacking. However, I do it myself in Photoshop and that's how I show you to do it. So see you back at the computer now. Okay, here we are at the computer. Let's get this started. So uh, I have my start point and my stop point of what I've uh, decided to use. Now, key. You make sure you don't bump anything, don't touch anything, because to delete any of these frames through the middle of it, you're going to end up causing yourself problems because you're going to end up with gaps within your stars. Now, I do live next to an Air Force base as well as a local airport, and I live literally under the crisscross traffic of the airport. So with that said, I am going to end up with some aircraft traffic that goes through. I'm just going to live with it. I'm not going to spend the time to try and clean it up. Um, so it is what it is, but let's go ahead and get started here. So I've got my Photoshop open. I'm going to bring my first five images in and we'll drop these in. Now the first five, because I don't have anything opened up, it's going to go directly into um, Camera Raw and you'll see all five images came up. Now looking at this, uh, one of the things is I thought about reshooting this tutorial because I kind of made a little bit of a goof, but then I thought, you know what? Videos always show you everything going perfectly, so let's just leave it as is and deal with it and show you. So what I'm talking about is when I do astro, I like to shoot my images being one quarter of the way over. Clearly, um, <laughs> my histogram is way over here too far to the left. And what happened is I just made a beginner mistake and using you know, my eyes being dilated, the images look much brighter on the back of my camera. That's my own fault, you know, but even being experienced, you can make, you know, simple mistakes. But with that, I've got the dynamic range within the camera, as most cameras do, to be able to go ahead and boost this up. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go down here to my optics, do the correction on there, chromatic aberration, and the lens correction. Next, I'm going to come up here to my exposure, and I'm going to bump this up. Let's see here. I'm going to go to a 1.5. I like how that's coming across. And uh, the 1.5 will be easy enough to remember in case I accidentally goof at some point. And you'll see what I'm talking about as we go through the process of doing this. Now, the first image is set. So I'm going to go over here to the three dots, open this up. I'm going to tell it select all, go to the dots again. And I'm going to tell it to sync settings. And then I'm going to tell it OK. And the optics adjustment and the exposure adjustment has just been made to these first five images. And I'll go ahead and click open and it will send them all over to Photoshop. And that flicker you're seeing is each image coming in. Now, uh, 5538, this is going to be my base image that I am working with and then I will go from there. So there's my base image. I'm now going to go to the second image. I'm going to hit Control A and Control C. So I select it all, copied it all, and now I'm going to close this layer. I don't need it anymore. Now I'm going to press Control V and I'm going to paste it onto my uh, base layer. So it's now the second layer and I'm going to change this over to lighten. You can see the stretch of the stars starting to happen right off the bat. Go to the next one, Control A, Control C, go to my base later, Control V, and select Lighten again. See the stars starting to stretch. And let's see here, we jump back over. And clearly, I've got the marching ants around it, and that tells me that I had forgot to get rid of this one. So I can just hit Close and tell it no. 
So now I'll move on to the next one, Control A, Control C, paste it, Control V. And right off the bat, I remember that I forgot to close that one that I just brought over. No big deal, because like I said, the marching ants will tell me that I've already got it. Close, letter N for no. Control A, Control C, and I know I'm trying to move quickly, and that's because this is going to be a long tutorial putting this all together. Okay. So, I'm going to change this to lighten, 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 lighten. Yep, these are all set to lighten. So, now what I can do is left clicking on layer four, left clicking down on background, they're all selected. And I can go right click and merge layers or hit control E and it will put them all together. Now, at this point here, I'm going to go ahead and do a Photoshop file save in case at any point things were to fall apart on me. So this is where I'm pulling my images. I'm gonna go ahead and click save and it will go ahead and get that saved. Now I'm gonna go in and bring in my next set of images. Now the next set of images are going to be uh, act a little bit differently when I bring them in. And the reason being is because I have this project open. So rather than all five images going into camera raw at once, it will introduce them one at a time and then already start to stack it on this base project. And you'll see what I mean here. So I'm going to drag this in. There's the first layer. I'm going to go over to the three dots, left click, apply previous, and then I can hit enter. It put it in and then I hit enter one more time. It automatically loads the next camera raw, apply previous, enter, enter, apply previous, enter, enter now you can see on this particular one this is where i have a plain streak that came through this is one that's uh, heading to salt lake city so i guess i actually have a third uh airport to contend with as well and so that one came through but we'll go ahead and apply previous enter enter apply previous enter enter okay now you'll notice nothing else came up so with this, let me jump down to this layer here. This is where that aircraft came through. You could certainly spend the time with the healing brush. Go ahead and remove this. If you wanted to do that, what I would do, and I'm going to do this right now, is I'm going to label this as light one. This is the first time that I have an aircraft going through. If I decide to mess with it, I would go control J, duplicate it, mess with it. See if I can clean this up, and if it doesn't affect my final image too much, then maybe I keep it. If it does, then maybe I just deal with the fact that there's the light streak through. But I'm going to label that as light one, because when I merge these like I did previously, I'm not going to um, I'm not going to merge the light one into it because I haven't decided if I want to keep it or not. So let's go through and change these up. So we've got the first layer. We're going to set this to lighten. Go to the second one, lighten. Let me see if I can change all the attributes at once. And then lighten. Yep, and there I did it. So that actually makes the job a whole lot easier as you can select multiples and then just set them all to lighten. Okay, now what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to grab this one. Well, actually, I'm going to go background. And then hold shift up to this one because I know I want to merge all of these. And I will merge them. And they're now merged. I'm going to merge this one, the background, with this other one. Whoops. I had shift clicked. I did not want that. I wanted background. And then I wanted control and left click that one. I will go ahead and merge these two. Okay, there we go. And now this light one will stay on its own layer. There we go. Okay, next we're going to bring in our next set of images. Let's bring them in. Drop them. Okay, and we repeat. Apply previous settings. Enter, enter. Apply previous. Enter, enter. Apply previous. Enter, enter. Apply previous. Enter, enter. Apply previous, enter, enter. There we go. Now they're all in. And we'll go through and start changing them up. Lighten, lighten, 
lights in just so you know whenever you merge multiple layers together this attribute of being light in it will set it to normal so you'll have to go back and reset that merged group of layers to lighten so that it goes through okay and there we go everything is put together now what i'm going to do here is i'm going to leave the background where i have all those previous i'm going to leave this light one and now i'm just going to merge these together oh and you can see i have another aircraft coming through <laughs> and we'll go ahead and actually no because i may decide to try and clean up Oh, there it is. That's the airplane layer. Okay. So we're going to label this one as light two. There we go. Okay. So let's start merging. We can grab these and these. These can all be merged with this one. Merge layers. There we go. Okay. Take a quick look. That looks good. It's got its lighten. There's that one. It's set to lighten. Okay. Everything still looks good. Okay. So here we go. Back up to the top layer. I'm going to left click on that. And then we're going to start dropping our next set of images on top. There we go. Drag and drop. Okay, you know the drill. Enter, enter. Apply previous. Enter, enter. Apply previous. Enter. See, here's another aircraft coming in. And that was actually our last image. There it is. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and call this one light three. Enter. Okay, let's change. Actually, we can change those attributes all at once. So let's grab this one all the way down to here. Set these all to lighten. There we go. And let's make sure. Let's see here. Yep. Oops, okay, here we go. That is set to lighten. Set to lighten. Everything looks good. Let's merge these and the background. Let's see here, merge layers. Those are all together. There we go. Beautiful. That's working. Okay, not sure how I ended up with a gap in this one. Not sure what's going on there. There's definitely a piece missing somewhere. All right, anyway, we're going to continue. I'm not sure as to what happened, but there's definitely something that's missing there. All right, let's continue. Okay, so here we are. This happens to be the last image. Um, don't know why that last set of five got weird and opened up as single images, but who knows? It just did what it did. So here we go. Uh, now, we have all of our images here all stacked together. You can see how we've got this, uh, this great star trail going. Fortunately, like I said, I do have uh, this traffic coming through. And then um, with this... Uh, somewhere in here, I think I'm missing an image. And not sure where it is. I know there's a file missing somewhere because that's why I have that gap there. So I'm not sure. Just not sure. But anyway, um, if I wanted to at this point here, and let me do a control save on this. Uh, so while it's saving, uh, what I could do is I could come to each one of these light layers. I could decide to leave them out of the image, or I could try to clean them up. As you can see, it kind of Swiss cheesed some of my stars, so I would probably 
leave them in. The problem you have is as you go in here and you clean this up, um, you're going to have the overall of the stars will still be intact, but you will have some missing pieces wherever you did some healing to get rid of this. You know, you give it a try, see what you want to do with it. The other thing that I want to bring to your attention, and although this is a tutorial on doing star trails, what I want to point out is this star here, this is Polaris. Notice that, you know, Polaris is not perfectly aligned. And again, this goes to part of why I'm always harping about how I love having the iPolar in the Sky Guider Pro is because this star here being Polaris, it does actually have a little bit of movement, but it has very minimal. And this is why I end up every 30 minutes doing a um, adjustment. This time frame in which Polaris moved from here, and I'm using the end of the magnifying glass, the end of the handle, to here. This is actually an hour and a half. So you can see how much movement there actually is. Now, obviously, it gets you know greater as we go out there. But here you have a star trail, and that's all there is to it. The um, key parts is make sure that you have some kind of a foreground in there to help, uh, you know, really set the image. And then uh, with that, you know, the more hours, the, the better the striping is going to go. Now, one of the things that you'll notice is my little predator guy here. He does have a few issues going on. You can see he's kind of falling apart, or maybe you don't notice so much. So what I'm going to do is at this point here, I've already saved this, and let's say I'm setting this up to be my final image, and I've decided to leave the airplanes in. So what I'm going to do is Control-Alt-E, brings all of this together into a new final layer. I'm going to go back in here, and I'm just going to grab my first layer, bring it back over and in. Here it is. It's already got its settings. I'm going to click OK. It brings it in. I'm going to hit Enter. There it is. Now, I can. what I want to do with this is, you see how much better my Predator looks? See how he's got some fall apart there? And what I'm noticing is I look around the image. It seems to be specifically his tassel that there's a problem. Use this one as my base layer to correct the tassel. I'm now going to put on here a layer mask. I'm going to press the letter G to go to my bucket. I'm going to switch this around to black so everything is showing through. Okay, boom, showing everything to the underside. And now I'm going to switch this back to white. B for brush. And I'm going to come in here and I'm going to brush my tassel back in. There we go. I think that looks better. But everything else within my Predator looked good. I restored my uh, tassel there. And here we go. I have my finished image. I am happy with it. And, uh, of course, as I said, there are other softwares and so forth that, so forth that you can use to, um, you know, put together your star trails. Some of them even have repairs. Or I could spend the time and go back because somewhere in there there's a file that's uh, clearly missing and we could get that put in. So there you have it. If uh, you have any questions on this, feel free to throw them below in the comments. And uh, we would love to see you over at our Facebook group, Astro Venture DSLR. And uh, if you like this video, consider liking, subscribing, ringing the bell and sharing it out. Until next time, I wish you clear skies and uneventful nights.